Welcome back everyone. Today we will be touring Oracle Park, home of the San Francisco Giants baseball team. Located in the Soma neighborhood of San Francisco, near China Basin. During the tour, we'll be giving you some facts about the ballpark, along with taking you around the ballpark, showing you different areas, including the press area and some of the suites. Every photo you see today was taken by me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate that. You can write in the comment section what you like about this ballpark. And with that, let's start the tour. Oracle Park opened back in 2000 and currently has a capacity of 42,300. Excluding the outfield, the seating of Oracle Park is very similar to Camden Yards in almost kind of a flipped image of Coors Field. The typical seating for the ballpark has three levels of seating. On the right field side, you can see that the seating dies off partway in the outfield. On the left field side, the seating goes all the way down and then kind of turns in 90s out beyond the home run fence. The only difference between that and Coors or Camden Yards is those two ballparks, the seating actually extends out a lot farther where this one, it just has a little tiny return to it. The ballpark used to be called AT&T Park, so you'll notice in a lot of the photos throughout this tour that the, the ballpark says AT&T, and that's just because some of the photos are before the name changed. So it's the same bar, ballpark as Oracle, but just previous name. Overall, the outfield seating is pretty simple. It's a single tier of seating that is mostly bleacher seating. There are several unique features, though. The first two you'll see are the Coca-Cola bottle and the glove in left field. This is showing you another view of that Coca-Cola bottle, and you can see that they actually have slides that go down through the Coca-Cola bottle. Like most ballparks, they also have a mini field for the kids to run around in, and that's no different here. They have it above the seating in left field. This is a view from the mini field, and they actually do a pretty good job rep you know, making a replica of it, and you can see the Bay Bridge in the background, so it's pretty cool to go down and check out. In right field, you have Levi's Landing, which is probably the most iconic thing about Oracle Park and what most people think about when they think about Oracle Park. It consists of a tall brick wall, and it basically really has no seatings across most of it. You, you really just kind of a walkway behind it. And on one side, you have the field. The other side, you have McCovey Cove. This is a view on Levi's Landing, looking back towards the field. It actually gives you pretty good views of the ballpark from that landing. You can't talk about Levi's Landing without talking about McCovey Cove. It's the water that you see beyond the landing. During games, you always see these yachts and various people take their boats out there trying to catch a fly ball during the game. If you've never been to Oracle Park before, you may not know this, but they actually have a walkway beyond the ballpark in between Levi Landing and McCovey Cove. So the, the cove doesn't go straight up to the ballpark. A lot of people love Oracle Park, and it's most of it's really kind of the same as Coors Field and Camden, which they're great ballparks too, so you're not comparing to bad ballparks. But I think why one reason people really do love Oracle Park is because you have the bay in the background. So when you're sitting in the seat and you look out and you have beautiful views of the bay, the Bay Bridge, and you know Oakland in the background as well. Beyond center field in the bay, they actually have a marina where a lot of people have their boats tied up and they have a ferry landing there. So a lot of people can actually take a ferry to the game. Another thing that really stands out in the outfield is the large video board in straight center field with the two large light towers out there as well. The ballpark is located on the bay in San Francisco, so most games are really cold and really windy. I prefer to go to a lot of the day games because, you know, when you go at night, most of the time it, it gets pretty cold by the end of the game. Given how cold and windy the ballpark is and the fact that it's at sea level, it's a pitcher's park. Year after year, uh, Oracle Park has had the least amount of home runs in all of baseball. One thing I thought was kind of crazy, given how nice this ballpark is, is you can see here the bullpens used to be in the playing area, you know, just beyond the foul line in right and left field, similar to the Oakland Coliseum, which I just thought, you know, how, how do you build a ballpark that's so nice and have that be the case? Most major league ballparks now, they have the bullpens beyond the outfield walls. In this photo, though, you can see that the bullpens are actually beyond center field. In 2020, they moved the bullpens from the foul territory to beyond center field, which is a, a great thing for everyone. 
You can see from this photo, though, that the bullpen is where the bleachers used to be. So when they actually moved the bullpen to center, they actually had to take out 650 seats. I thought it'd be cool to do a before and after comparison of the bullpen. So this is center field before they moved the bullpens out there. And in the next slide, we'll be showing the renovation. And this is showing center field after they did the renovation. They, you know, removed some of the bleachers, put the bullpen out there, and they actually moved the fence in slightly. There was two reasons for moving the bullpens out to center field. One, you know, it was a safety hazard having them where they were. And two, they actually wanted to bring the, the fence in. They may not say it out loud, but you can see here the deepest part of the park was called Triples Alley, and it paid homage to the polo grounds and how far that ballpark uh, center field used to be. It, at the idea time, it was a great idea to do it, but it just had so few home runs. So when they actually added the bullpens out there, it, it shortened it up the, the Triples Alley a little bit. So it went from 421 feet to 415. This ballpark actually has a ton of suites and club level seating. You can see here that they have two levels that wrap all the way around above the second level of seating. And this is a view from one of those suites looking back towards home plate. You, you know, you got great views. You're up a little bit higher than down low, but still very close to the action. And this is just another view from there looking out towards center field. And actually, when you're in those suites, you can go and they have a couple seating outside of those that you can sit out and actually watch the game if you're not, you know, socializing with everyone else. This photo is showing inside the press area that's located behind home plate. This is the view you see when you look out and you can see that it's probably some of the best views in all the ballpark. It's right behind home plate. You're not up too high, but you're, you know, you're above the, the net behind the, the home plate. So it's, it's a great place to watch the game if you're, you know, you know, the press. Adjacent to that area, just off to the side is what they have at the Salesforce championship suite. And this is showing you a view inside that Salesforce championship suite. So great place to watch the game if you can get in there. I think the overall look of the ballpark and the color schemes are great. You have the, the brick along with the dark green paint on the steel and other portions of the building that I think makes the ballpark just look amazing. From this view, you can see all the steel framing that make up the ballpark as well. And I, I just think using steel is always a nicer look than concrete. Not that concrete's bad, but I think it just overall the beauty of a ballpark tends to look better if it's made out of steel. Behind home plate, you have Willie Mays Plaza, and you can see on the right the public house, which is a bar you can go to even on non-game days. If you're down in Willie Mays Plaza before or after a game, they actually have a statue of Willie Mays there that you can check out as well. I touched on Levi's Landing a while back, and to go along with that, most people who know about it know that if, if someone hits a ball over Levi's Landing into McCovey Cove, it's called a splash hit. And I used to think it used to happen all the time, and they, they post the number on the wall how many splash hits there were, and I thought that was per season. But that's actually all-time lifetime. And actually just this year, in June of 2023, they actually got to their 100th splash hit. And Barry Bonds used to play for the Giants, and he actually has 35 of those. Speaking of Barry Bonds, he actually set the record for most home runs at AT&T Park at the time. That's what it was called, and they have a plaque of that down here. Very controversial, but... The record was broke in this ballpark. Outside the ballpark, down the right field line, you can see they have this wall of New York and San Francisco Giants, uh, their titles, etc. And if you don't know this, uh, the Giants used to be located in New York, but it's great to come out to this area and just see the history of the team. Outside the ballpark on the left field line on King Street, they actually have the Giants Wall of Fame, and you can see a plaque here. Shout out to Mike Kruko and Cal Poly. Moving back inside, I will touch on the batter's eye. I think it's pretty boring, not much there, so we won't say much about it. As you go to the ballpark, another thing you may notice is they have multiple clock towers. And I think it's a great look. You can see two in this photo and, you know, on kind of each side, they have a clock showing what time it is. I just think it's a nice touch to the ballpark. This is a closer look of the clock tower down the left field line in the outfield. So if you come in on this end of the ballpark, you have a clock tower as well. The lighting situation throughout ballparks in Major League Baseball vary greatly. It's always interesting to see what they have. Oracle Park actually has multi-light towers throughout the ballpark. You can see on this side, there's, there's two banks of them right here. 
Circling back to Levi's Landing, another thing to note about that is the wall is 24 feet tall in right field, and that's to honor Willie Mays' number of 24. You can also see that there's four pillars on Levi's Landing, and they have fountains that whenever there's a splash hit or the Giants win, they actually shoot off water. So that's that's a nice touch as well. The right field foul pole is only 309 feet, which is the second shortest in all of Major League Baseball behind the pesky pole in Fenway Park. And then you go from this 309 and it shoots all the way out to Triples Alley at 415. And that's kind of what makes up Levi's Landing. You can see in this photo, another thing that makes the ballpark great is they actually have natural grass. You know, it gets cold and foggy in San Francisco, but at least they didn't go to, to artificial turf. They also host uh, concerts at the ballpark, so not just baseball. I went to an Eagles concert. That was this photo here. So I would definitely recommend checking out some of the concerts that they have there as well. They also host a college football bowl game here everywhere, every year as well. So that's just a couple of the other events that go on besides baseball. This is just a view outside the ballpark beyond the left field fence. Just kind of see, cool to see what's beyond the ballpark here. Just a parking lot before you get to the bay. Almost every video, I like to throw in a photo of myself at the ballpark, just showing that I was actually there. This takes us towards the end of our tour. You can write in the comment section what stadium or ballpark you want me to do next. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want me to keep doing videos. And with that, take care, and until next time.